There's some interesting similarities between these two teams. Falcons and OG have the same score at six and four. There are two teams at the top of their group, and there are two teams that represent some of the new blood in Dota 2 professional space. Draft looks very similar to that game two yesterday where they recovered against Gaiman. A uh, similar kind of Nick setup where I feel like if they just get through lanes on even footing and can make that one recovery fight in that 10 to 15 minute mark and get the Nyx's levels, that their scale is really terrifying. Well, I'll tell you right now, they are not getting through the lanes on even footing. No, they are not. They are losing out in CS, and now Amar is taking the first one. I'm running around like this is definitely not very good for his game. He has spent a lot of time. Burrow Strike comes out just in time. That's one way to use the same king in his lane dominance. You're not going to be the best at rotating to side lanes, but TP uh, on an overextension makes things a lot easier. They're going to go back to it with the invoker rotation on the seven minute wisdom rune. Are they going to be here in time with the monkey king jumping down? They'll get it. Tomato hops in, hits the two man stun and steals away the wisdom rune. They'll get a kill on Amar as well as Tomato claims that last hit. Three to two Falcons up by just a small amount of network, nothing too major. Seb has come back to the bottom lane where they tried to go on Whisper, and they're still gonna go on Whisper here with Maureen showing up. Good cookie to get him out of Sandstorm. Seb takes a bit of damage as well. Ari's actually gonna come in with Tomato coming in from behind as well. A bit of split focus here from OG. Can they get the damage on one of these heroes to finish him off? Maureen actually trying to Burrow Strike into things, runs into yeah. all of OG, all five of them in this bottom lane. Awkward fight for Maureen before the Doom was level six. That was kind of your last instance to skirmish down there without the big threat on the gyro. And OG just keeping that pace up. Exactly what you would expect from them with the BZM Invoker and the Tomato Monkey King. These guys are going to get aggressive. Turn around, Doom, and the damage from Seb might just take out the Gyrocopters. Yeah, he's going to die the Doom, and Whisper hides himself away. Oh, Snake King can't get the kill, and Whisper what gets the double. Play. Huge turnaround from Whisper. This guy is just so good at recognizing situations, even if you're low, that the enemy's overextended. It gets the punish with the Doom, and now Tomato straight into mid. Falcons crumbling across the map, a four-man wipe across three lanes. They got a tier one mid, but big question is like, where is Maureen in any of this to me in stride? OG just breaking Falcon's ankles. Moving around the map too fast for them to be able to keep up, but they're gonna do it again here with the Vendetta set up. It's too easy for OG to guarantee both of these kills. Falcon's in trouble right now. I mean, they're just bleeding out a lot of net worth they built up off that laning phase. And Whisper yeah. is the gyrocopter, right? Because this gyro Iro's, uh, IO combination is so dependent on sustain, right? The healing that the eye gives you, the satanic buildup they eventually get, the doom is just an antithesis to all of that. You're going to have a vessel here as well. So you're going to have two cores with a lot of anti healing. Oh, that was very greedy. It was indeed. Tomato is aggression plays against him this time around. Whisper shows up with his Blink Dagger. It's crit, doesn't get the initiation he's looking for. Ari's stuck in the middle of nowhere here, and he's gonna burn out underneath the Sandstorm unless a cookie can save him. Missile's on its way as well, but it looks like Seb should be able to deal with that. The Burrow Strike doesn't quite land onto BZM. BZM throwing off the Ice Path, but look at crit going in with the stolen jump from the Monkey King and the help of Snake King's relocate. That's where you just walk off that Doom as well. Oh, the Vendetta set up with the Kisses and the Sun Strike and Tomato's Boundless Strike will all come together deep on the side of Falcon's base to catch Snake King and Skeeter sleeping. How did they all get there? They are just too mobile, man. And the tornado from the side from BCM hits on two. What is this OG team doing? They are overwhelming Falcons right outside of their base. This is insane kind of play from OG right now. So fast. Falcons with the Knicks. Mamar, he is tanky. a slow, slow hero. And he's not making it back to his tower quite fast enough. Snake King's down here with a bit of heal. BZM was there from behind, but because Maureen showed up, he's keeping his distance a little bit. Throws out the MP. Maureen trying to make his way out of this one with the vessel on him. The Colts now the swap goes out from Amar, bailing out Maureen, but now he's going to be the target. Hit by a tornado. Cookie goes forward, stunning up the bench and getting the kill. Now Tomato hits him with the boundless strike and crit blows apart. This doom in deep though. Whisper taking a healthy amount of damage as the cliff goes out for the tier two, getting that multi shot, but the real shots are coming in from Tomato with the Wukong's command that will finish off the gyrocopter. 
and now Maureen, he wants the punish on Tomato. Tries to hit it with the stinger, doesn't get it. Tomato hopping back in. You madman, Tomato. That was just an insanely aggressive play. Unnecessary, my man. Reducing a lot of the damage makes Tomato really tanky on these dives. You're looking at all the damage from Falcons. It's all magical early. Anything you get up here to reduce it is going to pay dividends in spades as the pipe is just being rushed here by Whisper and OG. Need I say it, they will not give Falcons any breathing nice room. Nice two-man Burrow Strike as a response, though, from Maureen with the Stinger doing heavy damage. Two heroes are almost dead already. Maureen taking a lot, though, from the Kisses. Swap will bear him a little bit of time here as Amar pushes forward. Io buyback. Snakey wants to chase and catch here. And OG full retreat with the extra numbers after losing their Invoker and a buyback on the Io. Everybody trying to get out. Maureen's a bit low. Maureen's going to try and punish it. He hits him. Now Whisper jumping back in with Tomato. A beautiful jump. Skeeter's low. They bought back at an IO for this. Skeeter, he's going to get slowed down as again Tomato is able to hop on to him just a bit more. And Ari trying to set up the impale on Cookie Land. So go for snaking. And the shard pushes him on the other side of the gyro to wipe him out to OG. Play together, slay together. That's all they're doing right now. They keep on spotting him. The catch is limited. Unless you get the swap on him. Now they hit something. Sapphire, immediately a Doom goes out onto the, the Sand King underneath Sandstorm. So he's dead, but maybe the rest of the team can still come in from Falcons. No, they give up on this, and now they're going to be punished. Azari came in at right time. Hit him with the Impale on two. Swap out, goes on to Skeeter. OG wants the kill on the carry, and they're going to get it too. They've got the Spike Carapace to slow him down, and they've got the mobility. The Heroes Whisper trying to do some body blocking, but Skeeter doesn't even try to run. He knows he's caught. He knows he's dead. And it might just be Amar who's going to be the last one down. And Aghanim Scepter, his illusion, won't even survive long enough to be able to get the kill on the Sapphire. They get wiped. What a team fight from OG. Perfect target. Take the, the remaining tier two before they uh, take that venture up there. Immediate punish. Tomato goes up to the high ground, still hits three on the boundless strike. He got up to Wukong's oh, man. Gosh. He couldn't kill him. Now he's inside of his Wukong's command, and there's nothing they can do about it. The two supports will die as OG flood the battlefield with heroes, running over multiple Falcons members. They're going to get four at the end of it, with the illusion of the Venge dying as well. And you even got the Doomsteel thrown back onto Whisper. Uh, he shrugs it off. So it might just be over, honestly. Like, I don't think your lineup can fight its way back in this game because your scale is predicated on getting the IO Gyro super fat. That window had just evaporated off raw aggression from OG. And I think the high ground was difficult, but not when the Venge is dead. Still have Aegis on this monkey. There's your big epicenter combo. A one-in-man attempt from Maureen to hold the ground, but it's not good enough. He had no damage back up. He literally just used the full Sand King kit, and there was nothing else. And he brought some heroes down to half, and that's about it. A swap back onto Mato will actually lead to the Aegis expiring here. Very deal cool with the second the life. Okay, Maureen's going to buy back. They're going to hit him with the instant stuns, chain him up right next to the fountain. That could be good enough, unless the Bounder Strike can get him away. Tomato, we'll a hop away to the trees. He's out. Something about winning TIs. The Falcons haven't done yet. OG. A blast on Amar. Amar looking for a swap, but it's not looking good. He's walking back into a Wukong Shaman setup from Tomato. He goes for the swap to the right-hand side, but still dies. He has his illusion to play with, but no targets for the immediate pickoff. Looks for Tomato. Tomato pops out of the trees real quick. Doesn't want to get isolated again. Even if he survived last time, it was still a bit of a close call without BKB. And you got to swap somebody in here. It's your only option at this point. Hits the throw strike only on one. Maureen right in the middle, just hoping the Sandstorm will do enough, but he gets blown up too quickly. The damage is overwhelming from OG at this point. And with a dieback, a GG is called Falcons. Six game win streak brought low immediately by a just immensely aggressive OG, man. This, I'm not sure if we've seen this kind of aggression at this tournament yet. This was something else. Uh, this is, I feel, how this team wants to play, though. That's the crazy part. Like, where has it been all year? It's coming together at this tournament, and it is a good sign if you're an OG fan because I feel like this is Seven, his element, where he can just run around, start getting the advantage on you, dictating the skirmishes, build up the utility, and suddenly you get to a point where you just can't fight back. Things is going to happen in this game, too, and, well, history show the game one. OG certainly ran over Falcons, and Falcons also got run over by Gaming Gladiators, probably the other fastest Western European team, and they did it 
off of Chen. Channel, Primal trying to channel. At the same time, though, I, my feeling on this hero has not been super hot. I think a lot of these games, it feels as though Brew is just a worse aura carrier than some of these other big meaty boys. Have you been watching a lot of Liquid games? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't pull them out of the hat necessarily, <laughs> but. <laughs> Seb, he'll pick up the first blood, and the battle continues on the mid lane as well. Despite Again, I don't feel like these sacked brewmasters have been winning too many games from this type of position. We'll I do put a wonder. lot of weight on the other two cores. What what happens if Ari, who's sacrificing a decent amount of his experience, like what happens if their wisdom room gets stolen away, or they don't manage to get kills like this, which BCM making the rotation helps them get a support kill. That goes a long way. We saw Ari was able to get a lot of experience a very brief period of time thanks to all the kills that OG was racking up. But I do wonder Mato if there's a point to, to Mato. Yeah, he's kind of just stuck. Never ending damage between Amar and Malreen. Reddit. That is Amar, man. Give him a lane with this hero and signature hero to ATF and giving him this kind of start. Going to force BZM down here just to defend the tower, but Falcons can bring numbers and go on this sanking. This is not an impenetrable defense when you have somebody as tanky as this Timber Saw with double bracer and reactive armor build OG up. also has a little bit of numbers. Seb is going to come across and try and help out. They're diving for BZM. They'll get their claws on him. The Primal Beast starts slamming him down and the Whirling Death makes short work of that Sand King HP. And Whisper Seed is going to be Frostbite and run down the top lane. So the lane's going very well for Falcons now as they... 10-minute power rune. They'll spawn top and Arcane rune. Big OG pick up. Really prioritizing these runes. And Seb's just been farming, man. He already has mech up, level 6, hand of God online. That tornado, that hurricane did not do him any favors oh, there. Barely bumps into a Maureen. Wow, Catches was... up to Seb, gets that quick kill. Incredibly unlucky. <laughs> was not his hurt. As both seem pretty content to just give up potential objectives and get the occasional kill here. Damage going out on Maureen. Can't handle it, seems. We'll be able to get the burst on Ari before he goes, though. Thanks to the help of Crit from the long range shot. But it is the Brewmaster Ultimate that still remains the dominant team fight mechanism and something that Falcons can't really fight into. Hit off more than he could chew there. The exact type of engagement OG are looking for. They get to use their Brewmaster ulti. Get... Nyx continuing to hunt them. Falcons continuing to group. Don't want to give up that pickoff. Still looking around this mid lane that has been a problem for them to push in and get information off of. Oh, the channel. He's going to go for it. Blowing up the hoodwink immediately and got the slowdown on snaking as well. So both supports will be run down. It feels like every time Falcons have gone to this mid lane, it has been death for them. That's where their vision is, but just can't get any sort of valuable connection here. And when you're not going to lose HP on, so if you do want to contest the Falcons, you have to go now, and you got to just get in there. They did seem to have the early read, and while they weren't in the best map position, they're getting there now. This, this is fast enough. Yep, they'll and be OG's here to stop it. Missing heroes. Now, BZM doesn't want to leave the Sandstorm. Malreen coming in from behind, actually gets a grab onto Tomato. Now, he's morphing into Strength, so it's not going to be a fast kill they were hoping for, but they'll get the collection on Seb after a bit of mech action. Whisper charging in. They do manage to hit the Burrow Strike on a crit with a Primal Split. They'll easily run down that four position. And the Sand King hasn't taken much damage yet underneath both the Chakra Man and the Freezing Field. He's proven to be quite tanky. Another Whirling Death. A Burrow Strike lands on the two of them. Not too bad as Spike Carapace gets some additional stuns. Maureen's still strong enough to keep tromping forward, though. Tomato is run out of damage. He's going to have to more strength. Waveform farther away. He's out of mana here. And he's going to have to hope that Timber Chains will get him far enough away from this situation. But I think he's kind of stuck. At the end of the day, Maureen and Skeeter were able to, to just kind of push through that team fight and uh, clean up the rest. ATF did a lot of damage there with these whirling deaths. This game. I do wonder if it'll add up at some point, though. Oh, Maureen gets caught. Trying to TP away. Now, he still has an onslaught, but a TP in from the other side from Ari. He'll provide the stuns for his cores to catch back up and get this kill. He's a tanky boy. Not alone. Those are the pickoffs OG's looking for that'll lead into some tower push. Got some skeleton rally on mid from Seb. Start hitting. Just have to find that opening. Got to get the initiation off the primal beast. I feel like if you get, if you let Sand King get to the Bloodstone here, it's gonna be tough to just run into him with the ores behind him. Count him up. So many auras. 
Grab on tanking, immediately denied by the adaptive strike. BCM pulled back in by the bushwhack, trying to get away, but he's just stuck in this muck and cannot seem to get out. They got the pick off of the Sanky. The primal split is used though, and Tomato jumps forward to kill the Crystal Lane, put some damage back on Amalreen. Have half HP. Falcons are able to reset on their cores. Two supports for Sand King and a primal split used. Are Falcons happy with that? Don't have to catch your own. The blink is arriving for Malorine, so that will guarantee it here off the smoke. And it should be a more reliable play than the others we've seen throughout this game. It will scan their own high ground. They know someone was leaving the vicinity. Just got to blink in and look for the primal ult. But again, a lot can interrupt that. It's not guaranteed here for oh, Malorine. It'd be so good if they ran into the Sand King. But if they ran into the Nyx Assassin, they might kill him. Spike Carapace, Mana Yules, they will get this kill. But it definitely is not the most valuable. Gotta look towards this Radiant Roshan. Remember, it, it went down here at the end of that last interval. It's true. You gotta protect this area if you're OG and Falcons. If you can secure more of this zone, D Ward, get your own vision up, prepare for this objective, it is up. Surprised they're not checking them. They check it now with Snaking. BCM's in a very interesting spot to be able to contest, too. This is a dangerous contest with the amount of AoE from both teams. TP coming in. Maureen sees it, challenges it. Has to be canceled. He blinks forward, catches with Chen off. instead. OG, they are way too split at this point. BCM might be an interesting spot, but how does the rest of the team follow that? How do they get into that position? So BZM pops out and will go for the split push. They've lost their Chen. There goes all their team fights. So they have to forfeit the Roshan and just push out the lanes. They had a Dire Ward on that Brewmaster top. So the second he cancels that TP, Falcons know where he is, know how far away he is. OG getting caught on the map. As what they had controlled is quickly taken away from them. And that is not an Aegis they wanted to lose here. But you were okay with their scaling, right? On the side of OG. So they should be getting the too concerning. I feel like with this Chen lineup, you you want every Roshan. Mm. I think that's a big component. The fact they lost that Roshan, I think hurts them a lot. I Just do always Falcons kind of find so it time. weird to talk about Chen lineups and scaling because Chen naturally falls off, but oftentimes the rest of the team is still going to scale pretty well. So but there is still some wild card factors here. Like if you go in with Morphling, you, I mean, you got to remember this gyro matchup. You can steal flat cannon and turn it around against Falcons as well. Yep. If you're looking for more physical rather than trying to get whirling death combinations off. It's a big component here to the late game team fight for OG if they want to look for it. They'll buy Snake King again. Now Ari is immediately getting jumped on as well. They managed to hit the onslaught on Tomato. So Tomato is quite low. They got him on the scythe as well. Now he's morphed into strength and he's going to be okay turning into the gyrocopter. But all strength up, those flat cannon champs aren't going to do very enough. BZM's doing a lot with the epicenter though. And it's whittling away at Skeeter's HP. They'll bring him down the first time. Can Falcons regroup here? They bought back the maiden. Second jump life back on the gyro. From Maureen and a dive from Amar. They go for Seb. Clean him up. A BKB activated from Skeeter. We'll sound the retreat for OG. His BZM does manage to get the blink out just in time. Whisper is going to be going back in a regular form. Blinking away immediately. Maureen blinks after them. Finds Tomato. Gets a grab on him. He's going to wait for him over to the side. But both Maureen and Amar. Very adept heroes at chasing. Looks like he's waveformed up out of sight and TP's away successfully. Uh, Hurricane Pike has saved Tomato in a lot of these situations. OG, they find the Aegis. They get a buyback on the Maiden. It's still a lost team fight, however, as Falcons continue to maintain some map control here. Daedalus plus level 20 Morphling. It's not going to do enough to change. We finally see Falcons go back for that Tormentor that they uh, failed to do with just a three-man team. Do it a second time, and it works, and they're rewarded with rocks. A box of rocks. I mean, this Daedalus is nice. Like, you have Daedalus BKB Morph now with a Nemesis Curse. If you can steal the Flat Cannon, which we saw him going for, and just pump all that physical into Falcons, there's not a lot to mitigate it. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot of effective hits from Morphling at a very brief yes. period of time. If he Flat Cannons everything, and then he also waveforms over some heroes, we're talking about like 10, 10 
10 plus shots from the Morphling all at once. Ari stopping some of the initiation with a spike carapace, but it's also with his body. That body's gonna get obliterated. Oh, what fun. a jump in from BZM, though. A big hit of Bro Shrike that leads Skeeter low. Tomato is struggling to finish him off, though. The Satanic heals Skeeter back up to full. Their opportunity to burst down the heroes is lost, and Skeeter is now full up, but Amar is not. And they go back for Skeeter. Now the, the Satanic is no longer there. It seems that Tomato does have the damage indeed to take down a second life. Tomato did not lose any HP off that initial exchange, so he's able to come in for round two, whereas Skeeter does not have a second Satanic there. Makes all the difference. And that is the power of the flat cannon steel. You look at the DPS coming out in this fight, I'll tell you, it's Tomato and nobody else here. Yeah. As good as the stuns were, it is all the Morphling. Just so much getting pumped through here, and they're just throwing all the buffs on him. But still some beautiful stun action from OG is straight back into it. Real game though. We have a fight on the triangle. Whisper is in trouble. He's already dead. And Seven Tomato getting on out of here. Oh, shot him. So despite getting the way here. Level 25 talent would be nice. He does split apart that Vlad's for Satanic on the Morphling, so he can maybe hold his stacking a bit longer and just heal up. Yeah, he's got a little bit more of a second life, but they want the actual second life in the Aegis. Both teams setting up for Roshan. Oh, that's a clash into each position. other here. Ari's going to break the smoke. The Burrow Strike lands in to get out the primal split. Falcons pretty grouped up, but they have their BKBs, and it seems like they're weathering through the damage decently. Tomato's throwing out those flat cannon shots. Skeeter starts getting low. Where's the Satanic? He's already used it. He's going to die. Used the Satanic early, it seems, and left him with no longevity in the team fight. I almost think they get baited a bit by Sand King going in because he, he's like dealing damage, but he's not killing them, right? And it just got all the BKBs and all of the survivability out from Falcons immediately with that hit. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're getting stunned. We're getting chained some. We got to we gotta do something here. That freed up the second half of that fight for Tomato, who again, he's just not sure. Spotted Ari. Try and catch up to him. The rocks, the rocks. He hit him. Hit him yeah. <laughs> and he spots him and he grabs him. And he kills this here, but yeah, I guess that talent. It's one of the first times I've seen the Tormentor Shard pay off for the uh, Primal Beast. That was pretty good. I mean, now you really want to land this ultra long pulverize on the Morphling if you can. Catching up to Seb. Buy back from the pick Nick. off, perhaps hurting it Amar. Amar immediately BKB, TPing out. And we'll be fine here. Whisper, they smoke up to try and get to Whisper. Whisper does have a refresher, pops a primal split. He'll survive. Gyrocopter trying to slow down the push here from OG. Catching up though. Burrow Strike lands onto Skeeter. Skeeter has to pop his BKB. Got the, got the pulverized. Canceled. No, immediately tornadoed up. So now Tomato is full up as a gyrocopter, ready to do some flat cannon shots. He just needs something to hit. He starts hitting up the shots, start going over to Skeeter as well with a vessel on him. On top of that, Amar getting stunned up, unable to move right now, gets a Tamar Jane across the the side. Whisper gets run down. Chakra running him out of it. Amar trying to stay away from this Morphling. The Morphling goes instead for the Primal Beast. Maureen so gets a brief tanky. onslaught away. Another Frostbite. Bounce back there with the Lotus Orb. Hit Snake King. They finish up the Primal Beast. And BZM Ari just continually playing around Tomato, setting him up. Hitting stun after stun so their damage dealer can go to work. That's a costly fight for OG, though. Double buyback committed between the Nyx and the Brewmaster, and you use your Refresher Shard. So it's like three lives on this brew to be able to set that fight up for your Morphling. But you still have Aegis for two minutes here, and you can continue to push. Banner will guarantee that as well. If Falcons can hold here, they might not be too sad with the overall exchange, but they might have to commit the Primal Buyback. Oh, two-man Burrow Strike, immediate buyback from the Primal Beast. Gotta catch something. Can they get the punish here? But the Shiva slowing him down. The Chakram also being a nuisance. Onslaughts, hits onto a couple heroes. Immediately grabs the Nyx Assassin, blows him up. No stuns, wait, no. Ah, he gets caught by Amar, who timber chains through to the back line once again, gunning for Zeb like he always has. Pops his BKB the at the supports. threat of the Morphling, continues to go for the kill, and they've got the supports, leaving the Morphling for last, who is fully morphed up into strength and has an Aegis. They are ignoring him right now, letting him do whatever, because they want to chase down every other member of OG, and they'll get almost every single one of them. The Primal Beast, or excuse me, uh, the Brewmaster <laughs> is able to slip away into the night, what and Tomato, go home, his second life will be able to be he's hitting. For 600 damage a hit. I mean, that's nice, but <laughs> are you looking at this primal beast? Like, <laughs> I think you need a bit more, man. 
He's got 6k HP with 120 base regen. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you luck. A Scythe, a Force Staff, gets Whisper away. They get the grab onto BZM instead, but Lotus Orb helping to protect him. The two tanky frontliners are dealing with the damage from Tomato right now and trying to put it back onto the Sand King, but that's not quite working. So they start backing away, and Tomato is now turned into the Gyrocopter. Got to beware of that flat cannon. And Skater's being a little left alone here inside the river. That's not a good place for him to be. He pops Orphan's BKB, done. Satanic gets back up to full. It gets a damage on to Tomato. He has to morph up strength. He's about half. BZM trying to get out of the river. Boar strike away. Amar goes for the chase. Hits a whirling death. Does a lot of damage. Another one's coming up soon. But Amar is losing out on HP a little bit here. It'll be enough to kill the Sand King. Oh, and chase after Tomato, though. Tomato no longer doing any damage. But full on morph strength. Grab him. Never mind. Onslaught him. Put another urn vessel on him. He has to waveform on out. The support's trying to give up their lives. Another rock it lands. lands. A bushwhack to combo it up. A tree that's set up the timber chain into him. And they get the kill. He all in for a bloodthorn. And there is no buyback now for Tomato. The primal be shard. Some call it useless. But Maureen would win a game with it here. As 85 seconds, no Morphling, it would no be buyback. Straight up end of the game if it wasn't for the fact that Brewmaster has kept the mid lane pushed I in. have a bottom wave here, and it's a catapult wave. Can't just cut this with any of your heroes. No, they tried to do with Couriers. It was immediately denied by Falcons. Whisper will try and cut what the third incoming wave, but the first two have not been dealt with. And Falcons, do they go for the throat? Oh yeah, you're going oh, yeah. down here. You Ignore the tier three straight to the tier fours and take advantage of the fact that OG may not have buybacks. And at some point it's gonna be all but guaranteed in Falcon's mind that Tomato is not coming back to save this base. Another tier four, no buybacks at all. Back to our protection. It's not coming up in time. Falcons are going to close out the game two and casually kill the Brewmaster while they do it. Uh, what, a, what a comeback for them. That oh, was a tour protection went back up. I think they have the damage to punch through it, but the Sand King's coming back out of play. Uh, Maybe they're not going to be able to close this out. Yeah, what is happening the right now? The creep waves. The Sandstorm blind? No longer being there anymore. <laughs> Maybe the Sandstorm blind is just what they need to be able to hold this one. Falcons have to retreat. And that means they got the tier fours, but they didn't get the throne. They didn't get any barracks out of this situation either. Whisper saves the game by cutting the creep waves and the waiting out an Aegis. So it's up to OG to take the pace away from Falcons and force something here. Refresher for Amar, even more tankiness so as he goes farm, in with man. that Aghanim Scepter. So far. This might be an all-in push for OG right now because no buybacks. Get a little pull in here. Lotus Orbs bouncing back a lot of spells, but they're going to take down the Aegis with really not that much committed. He morphed up too. Yeah, he's not going to have very much damage. He comes back in, waveforms, puts the Bloodthorn out, meaty BKB from Amar, and he goes back. They focus on the rest of OG. They start looking at BCM. BCM pops BKB, gets off the epicenter inside of the Sandstorm. But of course, these heroes are mobile enough to get away from all that. And they go for the next assassin. Oh, it's Primal Beast a little bit locked up. Bro Strike hits him. They're trying, they're trying, trying they're trying. The but Maureen is so damn tanky. He activates his Agon of Scepter. Just damage goes out. Oh, they just cannot right. do enough to kill a single tanky boy. And there's two of them demolishing the fight. That has got to be the game now, as there is no buyback for the Morphling or the Brewmaster. Now, Falcons can go and end the game. Dude, how does crit land a bushwhack on Morphling in that fight when every other tree is cut down? <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's so hard to get trees to stay up here. He finds it, and that's all she wrote. The second that Morphling gets stunned without the Aegis, you get hexed up from one of these other cores. You're just gone. Just not enough damage available to OG to get through the front line here. And just like we saw from Whisper, BZM will try and do the same. Dive outside of the base, yeah, kill the creep through. wave, hope that some horde has somehow the backdoor protection will stay up for a minute. It's never gonna happen. And the series closes out with Falcons. Making a long game two of it, but very comfortably so. An hour long victory for them to even out the series at 1-1. And bringing back some of their heroes that we've seen be successful here.